So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, Canada. Uh, probably waking up right now. So, um, uh, my name is Clémence Boivin. I'm a PhD student under the supervision of uh, Nicole Fenton, who is not here, but uh, Xavier Caver and Mibari Clamara are here today. Um, I, my presentation will be about uh, multifunctional forestry. Is it possible to encourage simultaneously biodiversity and carbon sequestration? Unfortunately, you won't have any answer today because uh, you will have to wait three or four years until my PhD is done. But uh, I will just try to give you a, a few uh, idea of what will be in my work during the so three or four years. So as you may know, we all go through a climate crisis and the IPCC, the International Panel, uh, Internet, it, uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change published several reports. And uh, this year it was the sixth report. At the same day that Russia started to invade uh, Ukraine, so <laughs> Really bad timing for IPCC. Sorry. And um, yeah, is it okay? Just we don't have a line. Ah. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay. Then keep on going or start again? Yeah. Yeah, to what? <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, but timing for IPCC and yeah. yeah. So, uh, we have an increase of carbon emission by 50% compared to pre industrial times, and forests and oceans are two major carbon six. And I will focus on uh, forests and I leave oceans for other ecologists. And uh, civic culture and agriculture are responsible of the loss of 60% of the species in terms of mean species abundance. So we need to do something. And that's why I'm here. So we have an increase in wood demand, as I, uh, as uh, Eve told earlier. And we have a need to sequester more carbon. And we have a decrease of species, uh, species diversity. This means that uh, we First, uh, we need to know the effect of silvicultural practices and carbon sequestration on biodiversity. So I will pre briefly present uh, my research questions, objectives, and hypotheses. Um, so in the first chapter, I will focus on the hero of carbon sequestration, which is, pl which is plants. And I will just focus on understory vegetation because other students on the project are focusing on the trees and the soil and other stuff that are bigger. And um, so I will try to know what are the effects of cultural practices on functional diversity of the understory vegetation. Uh, so the main objective is to evaluate the effect of the intensity of cultural practices on the functional diversity related to productivity. I won't be focusing on other stuff than carbon sequestration. And the main hypothesis is that uh, when the intensity increase, uh, we will have an increase in productivity, but a decrease of species diversity. Uh, in the second chapter, I will focus on soil microbiome and what is the role of soil microbiome, so fungi and bacteria, in the carbon sequestration. And is there any differences along a longitudinal gradient across Quebec? So I will quantify the impact of silvicultural treatment on soil physical chemical properties and uh, try to know the cascading effect on soil microbiome. Uh, because if the uh, physical chemical properties change, there will be a change in soil microbiome. And I will try to evaluate the role of soil microbiome in carbon sequestration after different silvicultural practice uh, treatments. The main hypothesis will be that there, is be there will be a higher diversity in the west than in the east of the longitudinal gradients, and the higher in the intensity is, the lesser the specific diversity will be. 
And uh, in the third chapter, I will try to measure the impact of mammal browsing on carbon sequestration because mammal eats uh, leaves and sometimes destroy plants, such as the moose. And uh, so it has an impact on the carbon sequestration because there will be less leaves to sequester more carbon. So the objective is to, to quantify this effect and to know if we have to take this uh, uh, disturbance into the carbon equation. And uh, the main hypothesis are that there will be more hair uh, than uh, if there's more hair, there will be less mousse and conversely, so more mousse, less hair. And uh, there will be more hair in the West than in the East because uh, the hair cycle is... Uh, defaced between the the west and the east on the longitudinal regions, and there will be uh, more, more hair in the clear cuts followed by planting than uh, other treatment. And I will explain uh, in briefly the different silvicultural treatment that we have. So now the study area. So it happens in black spruce forest because black spruce is quite uh, big in uh, in Quebec. Uh, all the stems are regenerated after fire. They all have the same age, approximately 100 years old, and we are now 20 years after our treatment. So as you can see on the map, uh, the brown points uh, are uh, my study sites, and uh, you can see the range of uh, Lepus americanus, which is a uh, hair. Uh, so we are exactly in the range of, uh, of this uh, species and the same for moose. So we have uh, two different regions, Abitibite in Escaman, which is in, in the west, and Côte Nord, which is in, in the east. Uh, we have a gradient of precipitation, uh, so less precipitation in ABTB and more in the North Shore, a gradient of temperature, and a gradient of growing season length. Oops. Yep, whoop, no. Too fast. Yeah. And we also have a gradient of, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, anyway, uh, of uh, treatment intensity. So we have control, which is basically no treatment. Uh, so this looks more or less like that when you go in, in this forest. And we have commercial things. So basically, you cut one strip and you don't cut the other strip, and you do strips like that in your stands. And we have clear cuts. So this has been performed 20 years ago, and I don't know if you can notice the little black points. Those are mosquitoes. So <laughs> I've been bitten a lot <laughs> this summer. And uh, so this is um, a clear cut followed by scarification. And uh, so scarification, you just remove the organic layer to be able to plant the trees. So it's supposed to reduce the... Um, uh, the colonization by Ericaceous species, and it's supposed to promote the growth of uh, black spruce. And we have a uh, scarification followed by a uh, clear cut followed by scarification followed by planting. Uh, so the experimental design is made uh, out of two transects, uh, 20 circular microplots of one square meter, and they are uh, installed just as. Uh, you may see in the following uh, diagrams. Uh, so for each chapter, I have different uh, methods. So first of all, uh, in uh, the uh, first chapter about vegetation, I will do an estimation of vegetation cover by stratum and species. Uh, in the, I will do some functional traits measurements. So all the functional traits related to um, uh, carbon sequestration and I will do some growth measurements as well. So for vascular plants, uh, I will measure the specific leaf area and leaf dry matter contents. And for uh, the growth measurement, I will measure the stem length and the diameter um, at uh, year zero and year one. And I will harvest everything that I uh, measured to weigh them in terms of biomass. Uh, for the bryophytes, uh, I will sample by colony. So as you can see on the picture, it's a small circle like that. And I take the colony and put them in a yogurt container uh, to measure later the water retention. 
and uh, I put uh, markers uh, to measure the growth. So I don't know if you can see them, but you have little beads that I installed. Uh, and I hope I will find them next year, maybe. <laughs> we'll see. And uh, for the second chapter, so about soil microbiome, um, I do some soil sampling. So first for physical chemical analysis, so total carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, the grain size, organic matter content, bulk density, pH, and maybe more because uh, thanks to literature, <laughs> I start to see that there's more stuff to do. <laughs> and uh, so uh, during the lab work, we do air drying. Uh, we see uh, two millimeter or six millimeter, depending on organic matter and um, uh, mineral soil. And uh, then we send them for analysis. And uh, for uh, soil microbiome, we will do uh, okay. um, we will do species and identification thanks to an environmental DNA. And uh, so we'll do the extraction of the DNA, amplification, uh, and we send them for analysis. And then I will do species uh, specific identification uh, thanks to bioinformatics. And in the third chapter about uh, uh, browsing by mammals, uh, I will count tracks in microplasts. So when I talk about tracks, it's uh, feces and browsing from the same year. And I will determine the species if I, if I'm able. And uh, I will try to focus on cervid and so mostly moose and hair. So thank you for your attention. And I want to thank all the fieldwork assistants who have been very helpful this uh, summer. Thanks, Simmons, for uh, these very nice talks and for bringing back those crazy mosquitoes' memories. Um, <laughs> is there any question in the room? Yeah, please. Um, I have um, one more question. Yeah. When you uh, mentioned about the forest management, and you said uh, that uh, mentioned that that is the uh, scar uh, could you please uh, like explain the function for that? Uh, what, what is scarification, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or like the function, why you do this. Okay, well, we, we do that. I don't do it, but uh, it's big machines that do that. And uh, it's just to promote the growth of black spruce and to avoid the uh, colonization by ericaceous species, such as uh, Calmia angustifolia, uh, Ledum landicum, and uh, Vaccinium angustifolium. Because when they are here, it just like everywhere and uh, so the um, black spruce can't grow anymore because it's the the roots are really dense i mean when i was soil sampling <laughs> it was so <terrible>. well <laughs> all the roots in the ground yeah you can see that uh, you're welcome any other questions for payments so thank you you're welcome <laughs>